Hey everybody, welcome to the office for Q of the day. So got a couple great ones. Uh, there's actually two, two questions that I've been putting off answering and until I found the right time. I think this was the right time. So there's two. First one is from uh, Thomas and Thomas asks a pretty, pretty great question. He says, hey Dan, I enjoy your perspective and I want to get your opinion on hot wallets like Celsius versus putting Bitcoin into an IRA. If you don't realize, uh, we did a, a pretty intensive or extensive video which goes over uh, Roth and SEP and traditional IRAs and how that can work out for, ta I mean, massive, massive tax savings uh, for cryptocurrency. It's not just for the traditional market anymore. You can put it over into uh, cryptocurrencies, uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, even gold, stuff like that. So, uh, so Thomas asked then, I didn't realize crypto IRAs existed until your recent video. Thanks, heads up. How does taxing Bitcoin now and locking it up compare to these huge compounding interest rates we are seeing, which is uh, 6%, 12%, 18% yearly for cryptocurrencies on platforms like Celsius. As with most things, doing a mix of the two is probably the best way to go. But if you only had a small to moderate amount of crypto, would you lean more heavily towards taxing it now or the weekly interest? So here's my answer in a nutshell. Yes, it is great to do two things at once. The things with, and we talk about this in the video, I'm going to link that, I'm going to, I'm going to have it pop up right now, but it's also going to be at the end of this video. The things with, with IRAs, uh, they're great, um, traditional SEPs and Roths. The things that suck about them is that you can only put about $6,000, depending on your age. If you're 49 and a half or, or lower, it's 6,000 per year. Uh, if you're 50 or above, it's 7,000 uh, per year. So that's pretty much it which if you think about it, uh, could be pretty substantial, uh, especially moving forward. If you could have bought, like, like, like let's say Ethereum in uh, 2015, 2016, when it was around 100 bucks or 10 bucks, uh, how great would that be? So if you could invest 6,000 in that, fantastic. Now 6,000 into Bitcoin, unless we get another huge uh, sell-off, uh, you know, you're, you're gonna get like maybe half, or you know, depending on the end of the year, might not be that much. So it really depends on how you want to do it. I see the IRA as putting it into certain cryptocurrencies that could you know, exponentially grow. I think Ethereum is a $10,000 coin and uh, I would probably put the money into that if I'm gonna do the 6,000. But again, it's a combination of both. I will max out my IRA with iTrust and I will put the rest of it into a, you know, into, not the rest of it. I'm not gonna say like I'm gonna put everything into Celsius, I'm not. I'm going to put a part in a Celsius, maybe 25%, some, somewhere that I can get a, a type of interest. Alex Mashinsky, um, he is the CEO of uh, Celsius, and he is also the godfather of voice over internet protocol, VOIP. And he talks about how his mission, and he's a very, very um, open guy. His mission is to make sure that you can all retire on the interest. And it, this is the very early days. So if you think about it, Okay, well, how much would I need if I if I'm if the interest rate is like you know eight percent, nine percent, twelve percent, fifteen percent, or whatever else it is? Depends on where you're at, right? I mean, if you're in Costa Rica, you don't need squat. If you're in New York, Manhattan, uh, you're gonna need a ton of money. So it just depends on what you want to do. But uh, again, for Thomas to answer his question, it's a combination of both. Me personally, I'm gonna max out the IRA. I'm going to uh, put into uh, money yielding things, and then also take a hard look at DeFi. And the rest of them, I have my exit plan. Uh, for Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP, Chainlink, Cardano, everything is out there. I will never ever sell all of my cryptocurrency. That would be ridiculous because you never know. It could be a moonshot. Just depends on which one. So hopefully that answers your question. So that Thomas's, that's the first one. And now for the second one, let me bring it up. All right, this is from Chaz. Chaz, that's a good name, Chaz. It says, hey Dan, love the video. It's being toured here. I can't decide to keep my ETH on trade into DOT. He says he mines ETH at about four coins a month. It's pretty good money, actually. I mean, look, for, for Ethereum, who knows how much that could, that could mean in the future. Um, which I think will lead me to my next question. Like with the ETH 2.0 coming out and it's proof of stake, how's it going to you know, uh, impact Chaz's business model there? Because he's going to have to find something else to, to uh, mine. Anyhow, he, say, he says, I mine ETH at about four coins a month. Hodler, not much of a trader thoughts. Uh, Chaz, I'm right there with you. I am more of a, of a hold on type of person. I'm more of an investor. And I like to, to buy up things and just hold on to them. My favorite holds are land. I love to buy land and just hold on to it for years and just see it appreciate. You don't have to do anything. You know, you don't have to do it. You, you don't have to look at any charts. You don't have to do too much. So land is fantastic. And I think cryptocurrency is the same way. 
you can you can buy it and hold on to it and uh, you know a, a good amount are going to go up. Some will not. Uh, XRP being one of my one of my um, reminders of, uh, of when you should actually let go of something. But I'm just too damn stubborn to let it go. I'm just I just am. I've already lost 90 percent, so 10 percent ain't going to kill me. Let's see what happens. Let's roll the dice, baby. Anyhow, uh, to answer Chaz's question, uh, if you're looking to uh, keep the ETH or trade in a dot, here's honestly what I would do is if you're mining for Ethereum a month, right? And I don't know what your overhead is. I, you probably have to sell some Ethereum to actually pay for the, for the electricity cost and whatever other overheads you have. Great. So let's say you have to sell two Ethereum. I don't know. So you're left with two. What I would do is I would hold on to a good amount. I, would, I mean, if I, if I had two Ethereum, I'd probably hold on to one and a half Ethereum per month. And the other half of an Ethereum, let's say it's 400 bucks, I would put $200 into DOT. And you know my slogan, dollar cost average. So I'm not going to take the 200 bucks and drop it on a Wednesday and go, well, I hope that's the, you know, the lowest price it is. And hopefully it goes up. I just don't do things that way. I have a, I have a strategy and the strategy is just to be slow and sure. And that means that I'm going to put it in uh, for, for you, Chaz, this might be a good one. Every three to seven days, put about 25 bucks in and then see what happens. Uh, other people who have a lot of, you know, a ton of money, they might say, you know what? I'm going to buy a dot. I'm going to buy, I'm going to put 500 bucks a day in a dot. I know people that do that um, just because they have the money and they're like, you know what? I'm going to dollar cost average in. I'm going to see where it all leads me. And it just depends on what you want to do. So dollar cost average, like I said, Instead of taking the whole wad of money that you have, two hundred, a thousand, a hundred thousand dollars, and just dropping it all in one day, space it all out and just buy it at either like daily, every three days, four days, every week, every two weeks, every month, and then take a percentage of it. So you know if you if you if you got a thousand bucks, two hundred bucks, uh, we'll say every Monday, and then off you go, or a hundred bucks every three days, off you go, and that that would be it. I think that's that's the safest thing because right now. There are so many fluctuations, especially with DeFi and things like that. If you drop everything right now, you're, you're down 30% tomorrow. Or you're up 100%. Who knows? But uh, I would rather be a little bit safer than a little, little bit uh, uh, loose with the money. And uh, I think over time, that's the winning strategy. It's boring. But guess what? Uh, boring works. And that's usually what happens with investors. So you never hear too many uh, investors crying like, oh, man, I, I lost so much money over the last 20 years because I dollar cost average. Usually it's traders. All right, so that's it for uh, question of the day. Let's jump back. All right, and that's it. So I hope that answered uh, some of those questions for those two people. Uh, really thankful that uh, you made it to the, the end of the video. If you don't know, there's a join now button underneath. Um, you don't get anything special. It's just like a tip. And I just do random shout outs. So for all my level ones, uh, there is only one level. I used to have two, but I just said that it's probably best if you just keep that money and spend it in crypto. So Johnny Henderson, Joey Serena, Marguerite Bonnet, uh, Kelly Church, who we got? Frank Weinhammer. That's a good one. I Am Not I, Barry Belasco, and Metalsman75. So thanks everybody for joining. I really appreciate it. If you like these types of videos, there's going to be two more going to pop them your left and right. Not sure because YouTube controls all that stuff, but uh, I'll try to do my best. And um, yeah, go ahead and check those out. All right. Thanks so much for watching. See you on the next one.